Hi, David here from Making Stuff Easy. Today I thought I'd share how I got started on YouTube, the equipment I used, and where I am at the moment. This is my seventh video, so it seems like a good time to do it whilst I still remember. So let's um, get a bit of an overview, shall we? This is what we're gonna cover in this video. First of all, deciding on a theme, then deciding on branding, how we start with basic equipment, then editing and creating your first video. Of course, getting your brand out there is important, and then we'll do a recap. But first, let's start off with deciding on your theme for your videos. So the first thing for me to do was, I had to decide on a bit of a theme. So I thought, a bit of technology, a bit of cooking, well, what's out there? Let's get some ideas from YouTube. So I did a lot of research, research, research. I looked to actually see what was good out there, who was doing good channels, who was doing good stuff, who was doing poor stuff and, and, some, and some terrible stuff as well. It's important, just as important to work out what works as, as much as doesn't work. Uh, and the idea here is to actually just try and find yourself in a position where you're not one of those in the terrible and hopefully you're getting better as you go through it. I thought, well, you know, uh, as I said, there's technology, there's cooking, there's vlogging, there's funny, I'm not a comedian, unboxing, I don't have that much to unbox uh, yet, perhaps, fingers crossed. Uh, however, uh, that's uh, basically, I decided, well, I'm okay at technology, and my family supports me if I do the cooking around the house. So let's start there and see how it evolves. In fact, I actually found out that uh, we ended up with uh, more cooking videos and technology because technology is a bit harder to do in a short amount of time and I'll be trying to do one a week. So, having settled on a bit of an idea, cooking and technology, let's just confirm that. Okay, it, will I be able to do it? And so I left it for a few weeks and I thought about it, I came up with a couple of ideas and I thought, well, okay, um, I've got a few ideas I can start with and, let, and then we'll see how we go from there. Let's look at branding. So we need a bit of branding. We need to be able to sell our product, get known for what we are, and we need to find a name. So for me, I decided, well, uh, making stuff easy um, seemed like a reasonable thing. I like making stuff and I want it to be easy because it needs to be easy for me to do it. So I thought, okay, let's see whether that domain name's free. So makingstuffeasy.com was free. Uh, the YouTube channel, Making Stuff Easy, was free. Uh, I could set up a, a, a Facebook page, uh, Making Stuff Easy. Uh, so that's cool. So good, makingstuffeasy.com and it was the name I went for. How do I actually go from the idea to filming, to editing, to creating, to uploading, and then finally um, publicity and sharing it with people uh, who I think are interested. Not just my friends or my workmates, but also the people out there who go off searching and look for this information as well. There's a lot of information out there on how to do all of these things, such as seeing a website or a YouTube channel, or whatever. So I'm not here to do that here now. So uh, go off and part of your research, if you decide you're going to set up a YouTube channel or just for interest, um, it, it's all out there waiting for you. And I might include a few links on some people I found to be very useful, some guidance and the like. Uh, but pretty much uh, one of the fun things about this is that uh, it's, you can do the research and you can learn as you go, not just about your own setup, but also what works, what doesn't work. And now the basic equipment I started with. Okay, let's talk about equipment. Basically, as I said earlier, I just wanted to start with what I had on hand. And I'll just very quickly here go through my uh, equipment list that I had when I first started. And you'll see, uh, nothing new was bought and I may do with what we had. Now as time's gone on, I have been able to get some new equipment. I might be able to talk about that a little later on, but let's focus on how we're getting started. So let's have a quick look. I was fortunate to have a current model iPad Pro Plus an iPhone 6, not the current model, but as long as these devices film at 1080p, then that's great. An easel for the iPad, a flexible stand for the iPhone, some lights to shine lights on the subjects, the desks or the items, some white card or core fluid is useful for reflecting light from windows, and some clips to hold things steady when they're needed. And for when I was standing further away from the iPad or the phone, I got myself a microphone to pick up my voice. I'll also look at how I actually got around some of the physical problems. I'm pretty tall chap, I uh, want some close-in shots, so how did I actually get the camera in the right position, or, or the iPhone or the iPad in the right position, uh, with the equipment I had on hand, and I'll have a, a bit of a look at that now. Making do with what you have is uh, the best option. So, hey, who needs a proper tripod when you can do this? 
let's briefly cover off creating your first video. Then once I've actually captured my video on my, on my device, then I've got to try and compile it into a, uh, a YouTube video. So I was lucky, I had an old um, Apple Mac mini computer that I could use, it had iMovie on it, uh, therefore it was fully compatible with the um, iPad and iPhone uh, outputs, and I was able to learn very quickly, again through YouTube videos and practice and error, on how to actually do that. With a headphone uh, microphone on, I could also add uh, audio channels, uh, some background music, and with the advice of friends and workmates who viewed the videos, I, I very quickly learned what people thought worked quite well and what didn't work quite well. So again, I realized I didn't have it right early on as well. And there's always room for improvement. And if I look back, um, I like to think I've improved and I'll continue to improve. Now, if you don't have a, an Apple Mac computer, then there's alternatives for Windows. Um, recently, I've moved on to using a software package for a video editing called uh, DaVinci Resolve. 14.5 is, is now free, downloadable, it's in beta, so it's not perfect. Uh, but if you've got some uh, patience, then you can do that on Windows. If, however, you're filming on an iPhone, then uh, you need to use some software to convert the raw iPhone output. Um, uh, so there's a software that's uh, called EasePad Video Converter, or any other numbers are one. The limitations there are that um, if you, unless you pay for the software, you're limited to three minute videos, but given that your YouTube video is only about four, five, six, seven, eight minutes, then that's perfectly okay. You're only gonna be shooting on your iPhone or your iPad for a maximum of one or two minutes and then putting the various pieces together to form a longer video. So that should be okay. And if I wanted to do voiceover, then I use a, a software package called Audacity. These are all available for Linux, Windows, uh, Mac, computers, but again, I was lucky enough I had a Mac Mini uh, and it doesn't need to be particularly powerful, just enough to do the job. It might not be the fastest, but it'll do the job. Now the most important part, getting your brand out there. So, you've got yourself an idea. You've got yourself uh, a brand name that you're going to promote. You've got yourself your first uh, video that you've created, hopefully in 1080p format, ready to go up on YouTube. So let's now work it out, all right? Um, you've got to create your YouTube channel. Uh, again, lots of guidance online for all of these processes here. Create your Facebook page and create your website and come up with some uh, common branding. There's lots of free resources out there for free photos, free ideas. You may have to pay for a, a website hosting service or you could use Wix.com or any of the other ones as well, out there as well, but you may have advertising on those. But again, do your research, lots of ideas out there, talk to your friends, uh, see if you can find something in your work that's done this as well, and then give you some ideas. All right. But the first thing is, having set up all of those, don't get too hung up on those, keep your momentum going, publish your first video, and then start working on your second video. Share and promote your material uh, when you feel comfortable. I couldn't do that until I had three or four videos, and I felt I had a bit of um, momentum, and I also had some ideas about what I could do next. So I started sharing with my friends, with my workmates, um, and indeed, they were often giving me ideas about things I could cook or make or whatever, and so that then helped me get some new ideas, which is sometimes the hardest thing to do. But the most important thing here, and you'll see this is being said by other people that advocate uh, this, is just start. You might only have it with one video, you might end up with only two or three or and, and no followers. I've only got seven followers on my YouTube channel at the moment, but I used to have none. And I had three and six, and now I've got seven, and hopefully that's gonna grow more. And I've only been doing this for seven weeks. It takes a lot of time in today's world. You get lost very easily, but just start and keep on going if you can. And finally, a quick recap. So that's just my story. Hopefully you found it um, interesting. Uh, comments below if you uh, have any ideas. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, to get me above seven subscribers. And again, thank you for your time. Cheers. If you're viewing this video through the website, then please go to the YouTube channel through the link below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.